Hare Krishna, glories to Srila Prabhupada here in Canada at 10 a.m. It's actually 10.02 a.m. on Saturday morning. All glories to the Sankirtan movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and to our spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. And we are here this morning to read from the original, unadulterated, unedited books that Srila Prabhupada has blessed us with during his manifested presence. And I had the opportunity, by the way, Yashodananda Prabhu, to listen to a class given in 1972, July 6th from London, England. And it was the first um, verse of Bhagavatam that Prabhupada was uh, speaking from. And he took a specific role in uh, having the devotees chant the mantras the mantra over and over again and correct them in their uh, <clears throat> pronunciation. So I've noticed uh, in our group, a lot of people just sit. If, if you're on the screen, that's quite fine. You just sit and watch. You don't speak. But you can turn your microphone off 
and you can chant along with your Shodanandana. That's the idea, so that you can learn how to do the chanting, the Sanskrit chanting properly. One thing I wanted to mention to everyone was that when Prabhupada was going to open the Bombay temple, they have um, different Brahmins, Smarta Brahmins in India that chant mantras and do fire sacrifices. And Prabhupada uh, had asked Yashoda Nandana Prabhu to be the uh, pujari, to be the priest that would perform the sac sacrifice um, for Srila Prabhupada in the opening of the Bal uh, Bombay Temple. He may speak about that later for us. But irrespective of that, and he was also appointed as the uh, headmaster for the school in uh, Vrindavan during Prabhupada's manifested presence. So Prabhupada obviously saw some kind of special, how can I say, uh, ability in Yashoda Nandana Prabhu to, to present the philosophy in a way that he wanted it. Because the idea is, and this is very important, Ram Raghava, we cannot concoct philosophy. We cannot manufacture philosophy according to our so-called mental speculation, which goes on constantly amongst many God brothers, not specifically in our group at all, but especially in the ISKCON group, or people that have left the ISKCON group and gone to the Godiamat. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I have a chance myself, and all of you do as well, to be independently, you know, engaged, using your time to, to listen to different people that speak uh, from these different organizations and get a, a sample of how they're presenting, why they're presenting the philosophy for your own discrimination. You know, I know Ram Raghava, we've, me and you have associated with thousands and thousands of people, especially from your work. And in, especially in my work over the years, I mean, whether it was running the ISKCON Toronto Temple, which has the largest East Indian community in North America. So I lots of experience working with different people, not only them, but with uh, all of the new devotees from there and then running music festivals and businesses and all that kind of thing, you meet people and you can discern the character of the person by association. So like that, it is uh, <clears throat> something that we should understand. Do not concoct philosophy. That's what people do. They make it up. It's it's a, a it's a disease on based on false ego, on the mental platform the mental platform because the subtle body is very active earth water fire air ether mind intelligence and false ego so the mind the intelligence and the false ego of the living entity is intact while they're in the material body and there's so much insanity really as we all know the karmis, they're completely on the mental plane. And they concoct everything that they do. They manufacture everything based on empiric, empirical research, mundane speculation, mundane fantasy, uh, mundane egotistical desires to become uh, famous, rich, prominent. It's just... It's, it's like a disease. It's just it's like a cancer. So like that, Prabhupada was showing us, even back then, Yashoda Prabhu, uh, Nandana Prabhu, it was interesting to note, while they were, while he's listening to this class, and again, the class is July 6th, 1972. So I want everyone to go to it and at your own leisure and listen to the class and see how Prabhupada corrects 
Um, like, for example, he corrects Kirtananda, who's in the class, who can't chant Sanskrit with a beanpole. Useless. Of course, he turned out to be totally, not only useless, very offensive. Extremely offensive. This was unfortunate for him and for anybody that was with him, but this is the history. But Prabhupada was working diligently with everyone, trying to teach his students how to follow this process properly, how, so that we could represent him to his god brothers and other people in India that we were qualified devotees of Lord Chaitanya and of our disciplic succession. This is the idea. Try to stay focused on that. And with that, opening little remarks, and please, so it's July 6th, 1972. Daniel, go to that class later on YouTube. Listen to it and study how Prabhupada was trying to teach us to be Vaishnavas. And by the way, he chants along with the devotees as well, very enthusiastically. So he's not just uh, showing us He's actually practicing, practicing the chanting in front of us to help us all get fixed up in Krishna consciousness. We're going to go to the, our beautiful reading of Prabhupada's diaries. Here we are. The Jaladuta diary. There's the wonderful boat. And Vinkat Bhatta Prabhu, are we at uh, Sunday, September 20, or uh, August 22nd? Is that where we are? Do you recall? I think we finished uh, August 17th, but I don't have the, uh, the picture. I, I, I had that. sent it the other day. It's it's still in your... Okay, let me show you. Yeah, please. These these pastimes that we're, we're studying at the beginning of the class are also very insightful, Daniel. Very insightful. And if you want to take a leadership role, follow the leader, Prabhupada. Do you see it, Vinkapata? It's, it's yeah, under we're reading uh, that page we're... number. Well, Friday twentieth, just above that. Yeah, I think I read uh, nineteen, didn't I? Or maybe not. No, I didn't. So I'll read on here. Oh, actually, we did read it. So I'll read, I'll start at fr Friday the 20th. Today, 2865, the captain arranged for a meeting on board the MV Jaladuta on account of John Mastami Day. And I spoke for an hour on the philosophy and teachings of Lord Sri Krishna. All the officers attended the meeting and there was distribution of prasadam. Thank you. The matter was radiographed <laughs> to Shumi, uh, Sumati Maharaji in Bombay. So she's following Prabhupada's journey. She was concerned that everything would be okay, be okay for him. And she was a devotee of Krishna, of course. The ship is stranded on the Arabian Sea, about four miles away from the coast. We are in this position from 3.20 p.m., 28.65 to 8.30 a.m. on 22.8.65. Whoa, so that's over two days, it appears. A lot of patience. Sunday on the 22nd, at about 10 a.m., we are now in the dock yard of Cochin. The dock is peculiar because it is, because it is by nature full of small islands. Some of the islands are full with nice hutments, formerly known as British Island. I saw my books from Bombay, arrived in five cases, and the agents loaded them on the ship at 4 p.m. on 22.865. The agent, Mr. Jariam and Sons, kindly sent their car for my driving in the city out of the group of islands, two big islands joined by an iron over overbridge as known as 
Cochin and Erna Kulam. The iron bridge, the iron over bridge was constructed by the Britishers very nicely, along with railway lines. The railway line is extended up to the port. There are many flourishing foreign firms and banks. It is Sunday. The bazaar was closed. Just moving forward to the next page, page 47. Have you got that? Uh, no, I don't have that. Hold on. Okay, I'll just read it. Sorry, everyone. I was a particular particular kind of plantain. I saw a particular kind of plantain available in this part of the country. The island known as Cochon is not an up-to-date city. The roads are like narrow lanes. A part of the city where the foreigners were, are residing are well maintained. Oh yes, we do. Thank you. The building factories, etc., all big as well maintained. The Mohammedan quarters are separate from the Hindu quarters as usual in other Indian cities. The part known as Ernakulam is up to date. There is a nice park on the bank of the Gulf, and it is named Subhas Bose Park. It is good that Subhas Babu is popular in this part of the country. I saw the Karela High Court and the public buildings. The High Court being situated in Ernakulam, it appears that the city is capital of Karela. This part of India resembles Bengal scenario, and the city Ernakulam, also Cochin, appears to me like old Kaligat or Toligunj area of Calcutta. The culture is Indian as usual. Interesting, Kaligat. I just wanted to comment. I used to go to Calcutta on a regular basis. And I, uh, <clears throat> when I was the president of the Toronto Temple for the uh, Mayapur festivals, and I used to, you showed in Andana, I used to stay with the, uh, not the Hinduja family. It was another prominent family. The fellow was the head of the Chamber of Commerce for um, Calcutta. And uh, his house, Prabhu, was right next door to the Chaitanya Mat in the Kali Ghat district, right next door to it. And I got a chance to go over to the, that uh, temple they had and go through their libraries and see their books and get some chance to uh, check out the Gaudiya Mat at Kali Ghat in India. So in Calcutta. It was a very fascinating time for all of us back then with his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. And we'll move forward now with the chanting of Jayarada Madhava and then uh, by Srila Prabhupada. So chant along everyone and in the verses at the beginning of the class, if you listen to the July 6th class, you'll get the idea directly from Prabhupada, how we'd like everyone to participate in our programs here at the Prabhupada Disciples Association, Hare Krishna Society, weekly sadhana program. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Jasodanam 
The son of Vasudeva, the all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Narayanam Namaskritya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narottamam Naram Cheva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Mudirayet Tato Jayam Mudirayet One should utter the means of conquest Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita after offering respectful obeisances one to the personality of Godhead Narayana two to the Nara Narayana Rishi who is the supermost human being three to the mother Saraswati the goddess of learning then four to Srila Vyasadev the author Om Ajnana Timirandasya 
ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನಶಲಾಕಯಂ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರಭೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೇತನ್ಯಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಂತಿ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಂಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರ ಜಾತ ಸಹಗುಣಾರಹಗುಣಾಥನ್ ಆನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸದ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಚೇತನ್ಯದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸಹ ಘನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಷಕನ್ವಿತೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ ಕತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಂತ ನಮಸ್ತು ತಪ್ತ ಕಂಚನ ಗೋರಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತಿ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಂಚಕಲ್ಪಥರೂಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನಿಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವಿಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಚೇತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತಗಧಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಸದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಶನ್ ಆನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ರೇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ಬಟ್ ಯೆತ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಕೋಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ವೈ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ Well, why is that? Is the Bhagavad Gita is part of the Mahabharata, the 100,000 verse compilation by Srila Vyasadeva and Sri Ganesha. In the beginning of the Mahabharata, that same verse appear. Narayanam namaskritya naramcheva narottamam ದೇವಿಂ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸಂ ತಥೋಜಾಯ ಮುದೀರಯೇತ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಒಬೀಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಆಮೇಜಸ್ ಟು ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ದ ನೋರ್ಮ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಎನಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಆರ್ ರೆಸಿಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ್ ಗೀತಾ we will be reading from the original non-edited non-adulterated 1972 macmillan edition of the bhagavad gita again somebody may say why are you saying this well we're saying this because it is well known amongst the followers of ac bhaktivedanta swami that following is departure in 1977 in november some of his overzealous followers started to change and edit his original bhagavad gita without proper authorization as such we considered that the adulterated version or the interpolated version the change version and we stick to the original version as given by his divine grace during his manifested presence with us 
Today we'll be reading from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, text number 8. All synonyms, translations, and purports by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, also known as the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Text number eight. Aham saravasya prabhavo mataha saravam prabartate iti matva bhajante mam bhuda bhava samanvita aham I, Saravasya, of all, Prabhavaha, source of generation, Mattaha, from me, Saravam, everything, Prabhartati, emanates, Iti, thus, Matva, knowing, Bhajanti, becomes devoted, Mam unto me, Buddha learned, Bhava Samanvitaha with great attention. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Purport. A learned scholar who had studied the Vedas perfectly and has information from authorities like Lord Chaitanya and who knows how to apply these teachings can understand that Krishna is the origin of everything in both the material and spiritual worlds. And because he knows this perfectly, he becomes firmly fixed in the devotional service of the Supreme Lord. He can never be deviated by any amount of nonsensical commentaries or by fools. All Vedic literature agrees that Krishna is the source of Brahma, Shiva, and all other demigods. In the Atharva Veda, it is said, Yo Brahmanam Vidadati Purvam Yo Ve Vedam Stagapayati Sma Krishna. It was Krishna who in the beginning instructed Brahma in Vedic knowledge and who disseminated Vedic knowledge in the past. Then again it is said, Ata Purushuave Narayano Kamayata Prajaha. Then the Supreme Personality of God in Narayana desired to create living entities. Again it is said, Narayanad Brahma Jayate, Narayanad Prajapati Prajayate, Narayanad Indro Jayate. Narayana dastavasabo jayanante, Narayana dekadasarudra jayante, Narayana dvadasaditya. From Narayana, Brahma is born, and from Narayana, the patriarchs are also born. From Narayana, Indra is born. From Narayana, the eight Vasus are born. From Narayana, the eleven Rudras are born. And from Narayana, the twelve Adityas are born. It is said in the same Vedas, Brahmanyo Divaki Putraha, the son of Divaki Krishna, is the Supreme Personality. Then it is said, Eko ve Narayana sin na Brahma na Ishano na Punagni Samone Mediava Pritivi na Nakshatrani na Suryaha Saika ki Naramate Tasya Dianantaha Stasya Yatrachandhu Gehe Kriyamanastrakadi Samyakas Tutistomaha 
Stomam Mutyati. In the beginning of the creation, there was only the Supreme Personality of Narayana. There was no Brahma, no Shiva, no fire, no moon, no stars in the sky, no sun. There was only Krishna who creates all and enjoys all. In the many Puranas, it is said that Lord Shiva was born from the highest, the Supreme Lord Krishna. And the Vedas say that it is the Supreme Lord, the creator of Brahma and Shiva, who is to be worshipped. In the Moksha Dharma, Krishna also says, Prajapatim charudram chapyaham eva srijami vaitu himam nabijanitu mamamaya vimohitu. The patriarchs, Shiva, and others are created by me though they do not know that they are created by me because they are deluded by my illusory energy. In Varaha Purana, it is also said, Narayana haparo devas tasmas jatas chaturumukaha tasmadrudru bhavad devaha sacha sarvagnyatam gataha. Narayana is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and from him Brahma was born, and from whom Shiva was born. Lord Krishna is the source of all generations, and he is called the most efficient cause of everything. He says that because everything is born of me, I am the original source of all. Everything is under me. No one is above me. There is no supreme controller other than Krishna. One who understands Krishna in such a way from a bona fide spiritual master and from Vedic literature and who engages all his energy in Krishna consciousness becomes a truly learned man. In comparison to him, all others who do not know Krishna properly are but fools. Only a fool would consider Krishna to be an ordinary man. A Krishna conscious person should not be bewildered by fools. He should avoid all unauthorized commentaries and interpretations on Bhagavad Gita and proceed in Krishna consciousness with determination and firmness. O Magyana Timirandasya Jnanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasme Sri Gurabe Namaha I offer my respectful obeisances. We all offer our respectful obeisances unto our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, who has opened our eyes from the darkness of ignorance with the torchlight of transcendental knowledge. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swamin Nitinamine. I offer my respectful obeisances unto His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is very dear to Lord Krishna on this earth, having taken shelter at his lotus feet. Okay. Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatyadeshatarine our respectful obeisances are unto you, O spiritual master, servant of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami. You are kindly preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Deva and delivering the Western countries, which are filled with impersonalism and voidism. Bhakti Siddhanta Shishyaya. Bhakti Vedanta Namine Prasannaya Prasantaya 
Tasme Sri Gurave Namaha. Let me offer my obeisances unto my Guru Maharaja, who is a disciple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who is always calm and joyful, and who bears the name Bhakti Vedanta. Bhagavad Vandanam Khadyam Guru Vandana Purvakam Kshiram Sarkara Yuktam Kadatihi Visheshataha Worship of the Supreme Lord is naturally very sweet, just like milk is originally sweet. Just as milk becomes sweeter by adding a little sugar, in the same way worship of the Supreme Lord becomes sweeter by first worshipping the bona fide guru. Adadana srinam danteridam yachi punaha punaha srimadrupapadam bhoja dhulishyam janma janmani clasping a straw between my teeth I repeatedly beg to attain the dust of the lotus feet of Srimadrupa Goswami Bert after Bert. Amsho Bhagavato Usmiaham Sadadaso Esmi Saravata Tat Kripa Pikshako Nityam Tat Prishtashat Karomishvam. I am a tiny part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, and I am always and in every way his eternal servant. As I am always hoping for his mercy and kindness, I offer myself to his most dear servitor, my spiritual master. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare during the manifested presence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu between 1486 AD and 1534 AD, Lord Chaitanya instructed his followers, the six Goswamis, to go to Vrindavana, discover the places of Lord Krishna's pastimes, and to write literatures on the science of Krishna consciousness. We see in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spent times individually with Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami in Benares on the bank of the Ganges and gave them very detailed instruction what to write, what to explain. This is summarized by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. One of these literatures by Gopal Bhatta Goswami was named Satkriyasar Dipika, which is a small book in Sanskrit which describes the various rituals for Vaishnava devotees in the Gaudiya Sampradaya. And in this particular book, he explains, it's important to remember that Gopal Bhatta Goswami came from a very educated background in the Ramanuja Sampradaya. His uncle, Prabhudaranda Saraswati, was a great scholar. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited the household of the parents of Gopal Bhatta in Sri Rangam when Lord Chaitanya visited there. So he came from a very scholarly, very educated, Vaishnav educated background. So in this particular book called Satkriya Sadipika, he gives numerous quotations of how in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, we do not need to worship any demigods. These various quotations here given by Srila Prabhupada are also found in that book. <laughs> they are also found in the Hari Bhakti Vilas, compiled by Gopal Bhatta Goswami and commented upon by Srila Sanatan Goswami. 
Now, somebody may say, well, why is that important? Well, why is that important? Because it establishes the basic fundamentals of understanding who is Krishna. Who is Krishna, the personality of Godhead? What is the relationship with Lord Narayana? What is the relationship with all different avatars and all the different demigods? Because as we know, even during the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there were many different groups influenced by the Mayavad philosophy of Adi Shankaracharya who were preaching that all the demigods and Krishna, this is all the same. Well, the reality is that it's not. And this is what we are seeing in this purport by Srila Prabhupada. He's giving a very good dose of reality in the writings of Bhakti Vinod Thakur and his son, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. We see that many of these quotations also appear. They also show up. They're explaining in so many ways the exalted position of Lord Krishna, Lord Narayana. Because we do know, according to Bhagavad Gita, this particular verse here spoken by Lord Krishna himself is very important. I've told this story a few times, and I'll tell it again. When we were in Bangalore in 1972, Guru Kripa Swami and myself, we were approached by a so-called scholar who came to argue about Krishna's position. It is very common in India that many of these scholars will come and they will bring some Sanskrit manuscript with them, either commentary of Bhagavad Gita or some other commentary of some other Sanskrit book. And they're trying to present some point. So this particular pundit picked a fight with Guru Kripa perhaps the wrong person to pick a fight with, but basically saying that Krishna told Maharaj Yudhishthir to lie, Krishna was dancing with the gopis, Krishna did this, Krishna did that. And Guru Kripa basically very strongly refuted all of his nonsense propositions. Now what happens when we saw Srila Prabhupada a few months later in Vrindavan, during the Nectar of Devotion lectures at the end of October, beginning of November 1972, we brought up to Srila Prabhupada this incident of this so-called pundit, this arrogant pundit and what he had said. And Prabhupada very patiently listened. Then Srila Prabhupada said, the way that you approach this is like this. First, you tell them you cannot understand Krishna, the activities of Krishna, unless you understand Krishna's position. Who is Krishna? Srila Prabhupada says, you quote him three verses. Brahma Samhita, Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchidaranda Vigraha. You explain that verse. Then you explain from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 7. There is no truth superior to me. Then you quote him that Bhagavad Gita, this exact verse here, chapter 10, number 8, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Mata Sarvam Prabhartate. It says, first you establish who is Krishna, what is the position of Krishna, and then you can discuss Krishna's activities. Prabhupada says, not this nonsense. They will go on and on and on with so many foolish ideas without understanding who is Krishna. So these great acharyas, like Sanatana Goswami, Gopal Bhattan Goswami, Jiva Goswami, Rupa Goswami, they, are, they have given so many relevant instructions, quoting from various Vedic evidences, so many Vedic Shastras to establish the position of Krishna as opposed to the hodgepodge idea that all the demigods and Krishna are all one and the same. 
They're not. We see in the Sri Upanishad, Sri the Prophet explains that if you buy a ticket to go from Bombay to Calcutta, you will not end up in Madras or in Chennai. Because it is simple intelligence that if you buy a ticket to go to a specific location, you will not end up somewhere else. Similarly, if you worship Krishna, you will reach one destination. It is a false idea to think that if you worship any demigod, you all receive the same result. No, this is not the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. This is not the teaching of the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is not the teaching of all these great Purvacharyas, the great predecessor spiritual master. How many times have we heard from Srila Prabhupada in various lectures, in his various books, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the Supreme Person. And all of his activities are completely transcendental, not subjected to the influence of the modes of nature. Every single day, Prabhupada would talk about this. Every single day, because Prabhupada knew this Mayavad or impersonal contamination was very, very deep. Like we sing every day, Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pashatyadeshatarini. That you have very mercifully come to the Western countries to preach the message of Lord Chaitanya to counteract the influence of this Nirvishesha Sunyavad, impersonalism and voidism materialistic life is very much bewildered. A person is very bewildered by the influence of Mayavad philosophy. So these kind of purports like this from Srila Prabhupada, where he quotes all of these evidences, this is a clear understanding of the, the position of Krishna, Lord Narayana. Then the question may come up, well, we say that Krishna is the origin of all the Vishnu forms. And some other Vaishnavas in South India, they say that Narayana or Vishnu is the origin. Just the other day I was reading, Prabhupada says, this has already been decided, this issue, by the Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam, eti cham shakala pumsaha, Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam. There are so many different incarnations, but Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. There is an interesting conversation in the Prabhupada conversation book where one person is bringing up this point of discussion about the discussion, the difference between Vishnu and Krishna, between Narayana and Krishna. Prabhupada says, ultimately, there is no difference. It's all Vishnu Tattva. Prabhupada explains, quoting from the Brahma Samhita, Dipartireva hi deshantaram abhyupetya. Just like if you take a candle and you light up another candle, then light up so many candles, all these candles have the same power. All of them have the same power. But there is still one original candle. This is the conclusion of the Brahma Samhita. So the great Acharyas in our Sampradaya have analyzed and written elaborately on this point, especially Jiva Goswami in his book called Krishna Sandarbha. Krishna Sandarbha is a treatise where Jiva Goswami Prabhupada is analyzing and discussing so many different texts of the Shastras, like that text from Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam, and many other places, to explain the special position of Krishna. Very special, unique position. We were reading in the Chaitanya Charitamrita for the last few weeks about Radharani, the eternal associate of Lord Krishna of how she is the source of all the different Lakshmis and Gopis. 
Krishna is the source of all incarnations and Radharani is the source of all the divine goddesses. All the gopis, Lakshmi's are gopis. This is a wonderful topic which cannot be understood simply by logic, argument, and reasoning. This can simply has to be heard from bona fide authorities. Prabhupada is presenting this science. There is a book that was compiled by Rupa Goswami Prabhupada called Radha Krishna Ganodesha Deepika, a lamp to eliminate the associates of Radha and Krishna. It's a pretty elevated book that describes all the different gopis, the parents of Krishna, the associates of Krishna, the coward boy, the coward girls, all of Krishna's favorite animals, the parrots, the deers, the cows, all the persons associated with Krishna. Krishna is not void. Krishna is not impersonal. He is a person, just like everyone on this call. You are a person. Everyone is a person. Krishna is a person. God is a person. And in the spiritual world, in Goloka Vrindavan, he has his associates, transcendental associates. There's unlimited associates. Somebody may say, well, how many relatives does he have? Well, you can't really count. There is many, many, many. And the whole idea of practicing Krishna consciousness is to regain that association of Krishna. Krishna has unlimited associates, unlimited service, unlimited transcendental bliss. In the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is an interesting Sanskrit co combination. It says, Akandita Utsava. Akandita Utsavaha. Utsavaha means festival, celebration. There's unce unceasing constant festival of transcendental bliss constant festival in the beginning when the krishna book came out in 1970 in los angeles shri Prabhupada gave instruction that on janmashtami the appearance day of lord krishna they should read the krishna book chant 64 rounds have kirtan so many different activities all day, all night. Very important point. One time in Hawaii, in the Honolulu Temple, Srila Prabhupada was on the second floor and he called Guru Kripa Swami and told him, you see what's going on over there? And there was a brahmachari talking to a young, attractive woman. Prabhupada said, this should not take place here. Prabhupada said, there should be a program in the temple. As soon as the breakfast is finished, they should read Bhagavad Gita 45 minutes, stop for 10 minutes. Read Srimad Bhagavatam 45 minutes, rest for 10 minutes. Read Ishopanishad 45 minutes, break for 15 minutes. Read the teachings of Lord Chaitanya for 45 minutes. Like this all day, there should be some reading of Shastra. This is how we learn about Krishna. This is how we clear out the contamination of millions of birds of being entangled in this material world. How do we do it? <clears throat> this is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ridyanta Stoya Bhatarani Vidhunoti surit satam nashtaprayeshu babadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki that by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam all that is inauspicious in the heart of the candidate will gradually be cleared out. So it's our good fortune that we have these readings. There are so many wonderful devotees so many wonderful souls who have come to take shelter of Srila Prabhupada and hear his message. And personally, I feel myself very fortunate to have been somewhere or other given the opportunity and the privilege of that kind of very special Vaishnava association to hear Bhagavad Gita, to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, 
and to engage in this wonderful service of hearing Srila Prabhupada's books, of studying Prabhupada's books. Very, very important. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, glories to Prabhupada, and thank you very much for your explanation of this uh, particularly important verse. As uh, one of our Prabhus, uh, Rupesh, was saying, there's a lot of uh, interesting points here to be understood in this uh, particular purport of the, of the verse, because with the guidance of the pure devotee, we can further understand the true meaning of these verses because there's a lot of uh, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, you know, a lot of interpretation of these verses by so many different people with different motives. So it's very important that we um, <clears throat> get the message of Bhagavad Gita properly explained to us. And this is a wonderful opportunity for all of us because we are connected with a very great soul, Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada talks about this, of uh, that people that do not understand Krishna are fools. And Krishna uses those same terms, fools deride me when I appear in this world. And the fact of the matter is, in the modern world here, it's a a, a society of fools or the blind leading the blind. They have no knowledge, but their, ten, their tendency is towards atheism, not to believe in God. This is the symptom of the Kali Yuga, that people have very little faith in spiritual life because they're, Prabhu, they're preoccupied with their own false ego their own uh, personal desires for material prominence. And these people that think there is no God, it is because they lack proper understanding of the science of God. And therefore, because they don't, this is a new era, let's say, of foolishness where even though there's so much evidence of God's existence and our position as insignificant spirit souls, one ten thousandth, the tip of a hair size, in this universe we are insignificant, but due to false ego, people think that they are important, that they are significant, even though they come and go. Even though they come and go like the turning on and off of a light switch. Life is not, even though the conditioned soul thinks he's important. In fact, in the scope of eternal time, we're insignificant. And I wanted to refer further, Avinkat Bhatta, to the end of this purport at text 8, just to give us a further look at the words. Lord Krishna is the source of all generations and he is called the most efficient cause of everything. He says that because everything is born of me. I am the original source of all. Everything is under me. No one is above me. There is no supreme controller other than Krishna. One who understands Krishna in such a way and here is the key statement here, Prabhus, from a bona fide spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, and from Vedic literature, who engages all his energy in Krishna consciousness, becomes a truly learned man, not a PhD. PhD, Prabhupada said, means the plow department. It doesn't matter. How much you speculate on creation, in the end, you still must die. This is what people in these worlds of academia miss. Therefore, Prabhupada called it the slaughterhouse of modern education. You're born, you speculate, 
You fabricate and then you die. Birth, death, disease, and old age. <clears throat> In comparison to him, all others who do not know Krishna properly are but fools. Only a fool would consider Krishna to be an ordinary man. Just like people think Prabhupada's an ordinary man. They are also big fools. A Krishna conscious person should not be bewildered by fools. There's so many fools in the marketplace these days. It's very dangerous. It's, it's actually very contaminating. I'm having so much experience, Prabhu, in this matter, dealing with hundreds and hundreds of devotees who are being fooled terribly fooled by others and it's a sad sad state of affairs so we're very fortunate as you said to have this opportunity each one of us to hear the philosophy of krishna consciousness in these uh classes that are being held online a krishna conscious person should not be bewildered by fools but should avoid all unauthorized, unauthorized commentaries and interpretations on Bhagavad Gita and proceed in Krishna consciousness with determination and firmness. So the very, very profound direction for all of us at the end of this purport in the Bhagavad Gita as it is. You showed an andana. Prabhu, if you could further articulate the understanding. Well, this is a very important point because one thing we see that this particular verse from Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada quoted that verse so many times and he discussed that verse from so many different examples, from so many different angles. Now, somebody may say, well, why was Prabhupada repeating himself so many times? Why was Prabhupada relating to the same topic again and again? Because in the conditional stage, we forget. The liberated souls, they don't forget Krishna. They're not subject to the influence of Maya, the illusory energy. But the conditioned soul forgets. The, out of their kindness, out of their mercy and compassion, Great personalities come down to this world and they deliver the message in so many different ways, so many different angles. We know that on the internet, there are so many people discussing various statements by Srila Prabhupada. Oh, Prabhupada said this about women. Prabhupada said this about one particular class of people. Prabhupada said this about you know, uh, marriage, Prabhupada said this, Prabhupada says a lot of things. What is the context? When was it spoken? In other words, there are many, many different statements from Srila Prabhupada, just like this particular verse is a very, very important verse from Bhagavad Gita. And Prabhupada discusses that verse from so many different angles to stress the importance of understanding Krishna's position, of clearly understanding who is it that we're dealing with here? Who is this person? As everybody know, there are many Hindus, they love to go to the temple for some celebration and they're praying to Krishna, oh, please give me some wealth, please give me some money, give me a good wife, give me a good daughter, give me education, give me this, give me that. Oh, but this is not just the Hindus, this is everyone. Every religion is praying to God as an order supplier. But this is not the idea, this is not the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The teaching is simply Bhavatat bhakti rai tu kitvayi. Simply engage me in your service, birth after birth, with no personal motivation. So this is why Srila Prabhupada has come. Now Prabhupada may say many different things, and he did, on many different topics at different time in different places in different circumstances, and it's up to the devotees to utilize their intelligence 
to understand the context. And if somebody has got a problem with Prabhupada's statements, it could be that the conditioning is very, very thick and a person cannot understand. First, there are certain fundamental points to understand. What is a pure devotee? What is a personal associate of Krishna? What is a Nitya Siddha? Nitya Siddha means an eternally liberated soul who comes from the spiritual world to the material world to deliver the message. What is the nature of such a person? What is a liberated soul? What is the difference between a liberated soul and a conditioned soul? There is a very interesting statement in the Chaitanya Charitamrita by Krishna Das Kaviraj where he explains Vaishnavira Kriya Mudra Nabujaya. Even the most intelligent person, great scholars, big pundits, PhDs, very educated person, they cannot understand the mind of a pure Vaishnava. It is not so cheap. We see in the Upanishad there is description. We see in the Upanishads, there are descriptions that one cannot understand the Supreme Brahman. Namedhaya, even if one has great intelligence, very great intelligence, that is not the qualification. Nabahuna Shrutena, somebody may have studied the four Vedas, big, big scholar. That is also not the qualification. Somebody may be very expert in presenting very nice speeches, public speeches. That is also not the qualification. What is the qualification? When that Supreme Atman Tanum Swam will be revealed to you, when he becomes pleased upon you, then he will reveal himself to you. It is the same thing about a pure devotee. A pure devotee, an Uttamadikari, a Mahabhagavad, doesn't think anybody is a, is a non-devotee. He thinks everybody is a devotee. He doesn't see the difference. But to preach Krishna consciousness out of his compassion, out of his kindness, he comes down to the middle class platform, to the Madhyamadikar platform to preach. And one has to be very careful not to think that this person is just like us. Some of you might know that during Prophet's manifested presence, many of Prophet's personal servants who were engaged in rendering very personal service to him, some of them ended up leaving or giving up Krishna consciousness. So the question was asked to Srila Prabhupada one time, why is that? And Prabhupada described that they were doing very nicely for some time and then they started to think that this spiritual master is an ordinary man just like them. Then Punar Musika Baba again become a mouse. So this is very important not to think of the bona fide Acharya as an ordinary person. He comes to reveal, he comes to give the knowledge from the spiritual world. Simply what we have to do is to develop the attitude of submissive oral reception. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhu, and, and I, I just wanted to, before we call upon our some of our members here at the meeting, Dharma Bhavana and Paranjana, Janus Priya and Sweet C. Sweena in Ethiopia, I wanted to mention that Prabhupada does want all of us to become guru. Yes. Absolutely. And he also wants us to become trained up as guru to share Krishna consciousness with other people. That is his order. You become guru. Now the question is, what kind of guru? Because there are different types of gurus. There's a Diksha guru, of course. There's a Shisha guru. And there's Vartma Padarshika guru. The Vartma Padarshika Guru, he introduces people to the holy name. He introduces them to the, to, to the spiritual master. And he encourages them to take up the training, which is the responsibility of a disciple. 
In other words, a disciple becomes trained up in spiritual life by personal practice of the order of the spiritual master, by study of the books, and by working together in cooperation with like-minded devotees to spread the Krishna consciousness movement and introduce the philosophy of Srila Prabhupada to others. And then there is an initiation that is possible for those that are st- serious through the Ritvik system. So these, this must be understood very clearly by everyone because since Prabhupada's demise, there has been a lot of confusion in this area by people who were motivated for the guru business, which is something that's very, uh, how can I say, prolific and opportunistic. It's a quite a good business to be in. Just like when you go into business, you always want to make money. So the best way to make money is get in the business of religion. Dharma Bhavana in Dallas, Texas, who's running an ashram there and part of our network. Maybe you could share some of your thoughts today on these co- uh, topics that we're discussing at the Bhagavad Gita as it is class. Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, Not we can, should... sir. Howdy, Bo. Yeah, I was just thinking about the um, really beautiful verse. I, I was also reading it not too long ago and just but pretty amazed how all the different quotes are there about Lord Narayan. It helps us to increase our faith that the, the Bhagavad Gita gives so many uh, you know, references. And even if um, someone may say in the Upanishads, the Supreme Lord is described as without form, the real explanation of that is also that Krishna is described as having a spiritual form. So even if the Upanishads describe the Lord in this way, it, it, we have to understand this from, by comparing all the different literatures together. The c- conclusion is the Lord's spiritual form is a beautiful form is the ultimate of everything. So that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, to just adjust your evo- uh, technical setup for next time, Prabhu. There's just some kind of a distortion. Just uh, put your, your microphone on mute, if you don't mind. Uh, thank you, by the way. And uh, Dharma Bhavana is actively engaged in Texas and propagating the true message of Srila Prabhupada to the public. We've got Paranjana, the famous Tim Lee, Paranjana Prabhu, also on the call today. Maybe you could share some of your thoughts and realizations with our group. Hi, Ba. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hi, Ba. I was having an interesting conversation with uh, a devotee who kept asking, why does Krishna allow us to forget Krishna? This is uh, a big mystery. You know, Krishna's causing all this, all this suffering in the world. Evidently, he is the cause of that. And I, I was trying to explain that Krishna is very merciful, so he allows us to forget who he is uh, out of his mercy because we have that desire. We want to forget Krishna. But I said, we have to always remember that forgetting Krishna comes from Krishna. So everything comes from Krishna. So it, it, that's his potency. The covering potency is also Krishna, and it's part of his mercy. He allows us to forget him because that's our desire. So, you know, wh- why should we, why should Krishna restrict our desire? That would that would be artificial. We can't check our desires and allow us to have our independent freedom because then we can't love, how can we love Krishna unless we have the freedom to love him? So it's, it's <clears throat> something a lot of people, not only, uh, Monday people, but even some devotees are bewildered. But why did Krishna allow this? Why did Krishna allow ISKCON to fall apart? <clears throat> why does Krishna allow so many things? Because he allows everybody to fulfill their desires, good or bad desires. <laughs> so, but anyway, I wanted to read a little 
section here from the first canto, chapter two, text 21. The not first canto, of what is it? First canto, chapter it two, text, first text canto, 21. Chapter yep. two, text 21. Okay, excellent. And Thank this you. explains how we, we become our original spiritual selves again. The knot of one's heart is thus pierced and all misgivings are cut into pieces. The chain of fruit of actions are terminated along with seeing of one's self the dominating factor. Purport. Attainment of scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead means seeing one's own self simultaneously. So far the identity of the living being as spirit self is concerned, there are a number of speculations and misgivings. The materialist does not believe in the existence of the spirit self and empiric philosophers believe in the impersonal feature of the whole spirit without any individuality of the living beings. But the transcendentalists affirm that the soul and the super soul are two different identities, qualitatively one, but quantitatively different. And there are many other theories and believers in different manners. And all these different speculations are once cleared off as soon as Sri Krishna is realized in truth by the process of bhakti yoga. Sri Krishna is like the sun and the materialistic speculation about the absolute truth are like the darkest midnight. As soon as the Krishna sun is arisen within one's heart, the darkness of materialistic speculation about the absolute truth and the living beings is at once cleared off. In the presence of the sun, the darkness cannot stand, and the relative truths that were hidden within the dense darkness of ignorance become clearly manifested by the mercy of Krishna, who is residing in everyone's heart as a super soul. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, that in order to show special favor to his true devotees, he personally eradicates the dense darkness of all the misgivings by switching on the light of pure knowledge within the heart of a devotee. Therefore, on the on account of the personality of God has taking charge of illuminating the heart of his devotee, certainly a devotee engaged in his service in transcendental love cannot remain in darkness about everything in absolute and relative truth. The devotee cannot remain in darkness, and because the devotee is enlightened by the personality of God and his knowledge is certainly perfect than those we speculate on the absolute truth by dint of one's own limited power of approach. Such knowledge is called parampara or the deductive knowledge coming down from the authority of the submissive oral receiver bona fide by service and surrender. One cannot challenge the authority of the Supreme and know him also at the same time. He reserves the right of not being exposed to such challenging spirit of an insignificant spark of the whole, subjected to the control of the illusory energy. The devotees are submissive, and therefore the transcendental knowledge descends from the personality of Godhead to Brahma and from Brahma to his sons and disciples in succession and held by the super soul within such devotees. That is the perfect way of learning transcendental knowledge. Haribo. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, very uh, important to understand that this is a descending process of knowledge, not ascending. And it has to come through the conduit of the pure devotee. We have John Espria in Hawaii. Hopefully he's, uh, he's up fairly early, I guess. Are John Espria. Glory to Prabhupada. Maybe you could uh, share some few thoughts for us. Just a uh, very important subject matters we're discussing here. And um, Sila Prabhupada is the only guru that did not compromise on his preaching, never. Why? Because he had no business pleasing anybody but Krishna, Guru and Gauranga. So when that's your, your base, that you only want to please your guru, then you don't have to compromise with anybody or anything. And uh, 
For one instance, Prabhupada was invited to in India to a big this Mayavari wrote a some kind of book and they they wanted Prabhupada to go to make his book bona fide. So Prabhupada agreed of going to this, uh, and there were thousands of people there. Prabhupada agreed to go to this uh place because there were gonna be lot, lots of people, but he said, I I'll come, but I, I have to be the first person to speak. He didn't want to listen to all the stupid nonsense that we're going to talk about. So, so there's thousands of people, and Prabhupada is there, and so the ceremony starts, and they so they call Prabhupada to talk, and Prabhupada said something. I am a Hindu. You are all Hindus, and these people—they're all nonsense. And I'm leaving now. And if I was you, I would leave now. And Prabhupada said, if you said Krishna is God, you're Hindus. So Prabhupada got up and left. So that's Prabhupada. <laughs> just to debate these Maya bodies. And Prabhupada took every opportunity, just like on his books, we see it, Prabhupada takes every opportunity to 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 put the scientists on their place, and especially the Mayavadis. Every opportunity he gets, he... he. So somebody like that, some people that don't understand this, they could read this and they go, oh, you know, they're just talking about who is better, who is better. But no, Prabhupada had a specific mission to establish Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And not only did Prabhupada give us Krishna, he gave us Vrindavan Krishna. There's so many Hindus. You talk to most Hindus, we were talking about this earlier, you talk to so many Hindus, and yeah, oh yeah, Krishna, Ganesh, Shiva, uh, it's all, you know, they think it's all the same, they don't understand that. And Srila Prabhupada made sure that he was putting this message, no, Krishna is a supreme personality of Godhead. He is above and beyond any of these demigods. And most Hindus don't understand this. Only Vaishnavas understand this. So this is not very popular when, when, when you preach. So most, most of these Bogos gurus, they preach why they want millions of followers. What do that mean? That means big bank account, fame, and that's the whole purpose. Prabhupada never was interested in any kind of money. His only interest was to bring Krishna right up front and give it for free. Prabhupada never charged for one mantra. All the other gurus, or most of them, they have an initiation fee, and then you gotta they just milk you. So Prabhupada never he said if anybody's charging for knowledge, he's bogus. And Prabhupada never made up any nothing. He simply repeat verbatim what he heard from Bhakti Siddhanta. What Prabhupada talks, my understanding is at least 90% Bhakti Siddhanta. And that's that's the purpose. That, that's what we that's the example he set up. Don't talk nonsense. He said you could be nonsense. That's okay. That's your problem. But I'm not nonsense. So you simply repeat what you hear from me, and then this message will be effective. And I'm so proud that we're we're at least attempting here. With attend, that's what we're trying to do to establish that this is the way to get knowledge. Why get it secondhand? Get it from the pure, the ultimate pure, the body. Hare Krishna. Yes. That's well spoken, and thank you very much. We have one last person in our list today in the discussion. Sweetie C. Swina in Ethiopia. Do you have any comments you'd like to share with us today on this discussion of Bhagavad Gita? She's still on Hare the Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Actually, you. I just wanted to share one thing. It was very interesting. One of my friends, uh, you know, 
um, she is uh, she is Chinese of, of Chinese origin, but some years ago she was actually getting into you know, spirituality. She went to India to some ashram and and she mm. apparently practices. Um, spirituality. I think she doesn't do our Krishna consciousness, but um, whatever form of spirituality she does, she just wrote to me. It was interesting this morning that you know her father passed away, and like if she hadn't had like you know a spirituality with her, I mean, like it would have been very hard to deal with it. So I I spoke to her this morning. Uh, she called me up. She was on her way from Hong Kong back to back to Bangkok. It was quite interesting, and I I was trying to tell her how. You know, for me, after my mom passed away, it almost took two years actually until until I read the Bhagavad Gita, and you know, then we start to realize we are not this material body; we are the soul, and you know, all sorts of things <laughs> that come to you. So it was just 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 this morning it happened. So I thought I'd just share it with you. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I think Bhagavad Gita has been a savior for me. So, <laughs> well, good to see you, and thank you. And you're right; it's hard to understand we're not the body, but it is. Uh, possible as we've been discussing it this morning through the po- process of bhakti yoga and devotional service and just before we wind up today's discussion uh, we have a group that meets every Thursday evening uh, of devotees that are interested in pushing forward our philosophy of Prabhupada first and I wanted our uh, production manager, Vinkat Bhatta, if he could read out the agenda that we have of things to do, just so everybody here, Daniel and all the rest of us that are joined together, can understand that there's more to this uh, mission outside of these classes. And if there's any way you can participate in it, let us know. Be in touch with us either by email or by uh, phone or by messenger or by WhatsApp. And we can discuss if you want to participate. Every activity requires land, labor, and capital. So in any particular way, you think you can effectively help us with the propagation of the truth for the future of mankind, please be in touch. Vinkat Bhatta, could you bring up the list and read it out for us? Yeah, sure. So we have the regular online classes like these. Then we have uh, we've started this annual Vyasa Puja book publication. Then uh, we're planning to do a regular newsletter, you know, maybe uh, monthly or biweekly. Then we have our website Hare Krishna Society dot org, and uh, we have our Facebook group, PDA Facebook group, uh, around twelve thousand seven hundred members now of that Facebook group. And then uh, we have our Hare Krishna Society YouTube channel, which uh, even this current class is getting broadcast into the uh, channel live. And then we're we're gonna start getting on these other social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. And uh, then we, time to time, we have those special events for the different festivals like uh, Srila Prabhupada's um, Vyas Puja appearance day, like that. Then uh, book distribution, we're planning, well, in fact, on our website, we're going to um, have all the original books available for sale in starting in uh, India, Canada, US, starting in these three countries. Then uh, Sankirtan, you know, yes, we want to start doing Harinam Sankirtan. And uh, some of our members, they do Prasadam distribution in their local areas. And then we're developing different centers in different local areas. Then we have our media team meeting every week. We meet to discuss all these things, as uh, Vishwakarma Prabhu was mentioning. Then we have the Ritvik system of initiations. If anyone is aspiring to get initiated, become a disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, then we're also planning a a streaming channel, like a, a live streaming TV kind of on YouTube. And uh, then have legal team and also this festival committee. So, you know, we have our uh, very nice volunteers who create posters for each event, like Ekadashi or any upcoming festival, you will see the posters with our Hare Krishna Society logo. We've started that recently. So that's it. Okay, well, thank you very much. And, you know, we want to thank everybody for joining us today. You can see this list. If you want to 
get more information, like I mentioned, just be in touch with us. There's a lot of things in this list that need to be done as we begin to build out the mission of Srila Prabhupada in the Hare Krishna Society. This is, a very, this is very important for the, for the benefit of humanity that the pure message of Srila Prabhupada is unadulterated and his le- legacy is protected not only just for our, us but for future generations because it is the truth that will save us from all misery, the absolute truth. So all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, everyone. And don't forget, we'll be back on air tomorrow for um, <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavatam discussion and uh, discussion and reading at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know some of you might have missed the class today because of uh, misunderstanding of time zones. And uh, we look forward to that as part of our sadhana program here at the Hare Krishna Society Prabhupada Disciples Association. Now chant along with Srila Prabhupada as he leads us in Kirtan. Hare Krishna. Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Vedanta Sri Vasudhi Gaurata Bhuta Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Hare Krishna
Vanchakalpa Tarubyascha Kripa Sindubya Evacha Patitanam Pavani Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namo Namaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna <laughs>